So the deal in the previous video was that if I got more likes than usual, I would put in the time to create a second part to this video. So if I go to the YouTube studio and look at the analytics, this video, our BMS graphics suck part one, <laughs> um, it's got more likes than usual. So I guess that's great, but now I actually have to commit to doing the second part because these videos take a very long time. I usually allow about two hours on a Sunday morning, get a cup of coffee, go sit in the lounge, and I think about what this video will be. I draft that a bunch of dot points, a bit of introduction, a body, a bit of conclusion, a call to action, and I try and sort of think of a way to really engage with, with all of you. This morning, I spent four hours just trying to work out what an advanced air handle unit graphic would look like. So I actually haven't prepared any of the content of what I'm supposed to say. So I'm just gonna completely wing this video. Um, I don't have a strategy around what to say, when to say it, and, and end off really nicely. So hopefully at the end of this 15, 20 minutes, it's gonna make sense. Today's video, we're gonna look at, well, two parts really. The first part of this video, I'm just gonna talk through some of the, the first stage in improvements to graphics. So for some of you, that this first bit, you'll know some of this. Um, all of my projects, I, I specify and enforce this first part, but there might be some of you around the world that could get a few ideas of how to just easily improve your AHU graphic. And then we'll step into the second part, which what took me four hours this morning was to try and work out, you know, if we're gonna get a really advanced graphic, what does that look like? Let's get into it. So here we can see just our normal air handling unit, pretty much quite similar to what we discussed in the previous video where I showed you three examples of air handling unit graphics from 20 years ago, you know, supply fan, return fan, heating, cooling coils, the economy dampers. And I sort of introduced this idea in the previous video that, you know, our graphics for our air handling units or pretty much everything, they haven't changed much in the last 20 years. And of course this video is to expand further and to discuss a few ideas of what we could do to enhance this, to improve this. So just quickly on the top there where it says AHU01 North Perimeter, that's the normal top banner that every graphic has. Often up there we'll have chill water supply temperature, the heating hot water supply temperature, and the fire alarm. So that on every single graphic you can see some key points that affect the whole building. You might have your customer's logo and your, your logo on there as well. So that's the, the top banner. What I really wanna focus on here is that right-hand side banner, and that's this first part of the discussion today. On the right-hand side, there's a few icons. You can click on them and they will go to somewhere else. The very bottom one, the icon there is for a floor. So when you click on the floor, all it does is it takes you to the plant room layout graphic that shows where this AHU is actually installed. So this is not very difficult because when you're converting the CAD files or cleaning up the CAD files for the floors, showing all the VAVs and the package units and the fan coordinates and temperature sensors and return dampers and CO2 sensors, when you're cleaning up those CAD files for all the floors, also clean up the CAD files for the main plant rooms, the low rise plant room, the high rise plant room, the roof plant room, the basement plant rooms. It's very useful for a server technician who gets called out to a site. You might not know the site. There's a problem on the air handling unit. They can click on that floor icon and see exactly where that AHU is. So on this little floor plan here of the plant room, chill water, hot water, condenser water, in the top in the middle is our AHU1. So the server technician knows exactly where to go. It's quite a nice thing to have that. It's not hard to do that. And this is a simple thing. This is not really advanced, but if you just take some time to provide some of these plant room graphics, like no rush, the facility manager will appreciate that. Because what happens is, I'm sort of digressing here again, I'm rambling because I don't have any notes to look at, but our customers can't see code and database. They can't see energy efficiency necessarily. So, and building owners will often complain and facility managers that don't know what the BMS service technician is doing. They're paying a lot of money, $100,000 a year, they don't know what they're doing. So if you just create this simple little graphic, like it might take a bit of time to do it, but you load this graphic up, you put that little floor icon on you know, the chiller page, the boiler page, the cooling tower page, and the AHU pages. On the way out of the door, you say to the facility manager, hey man, have a look at that plant room graphic I created on level 15, and you walk out. They can now see, so they can see something. They can see they're paying money every month and they're getting something back in return. 
It's a simple thing to do that's not advanced. The next one of the other buttons there is that trend button. And what that button does, when you click on that, it opens up a pre-configured and saved group of trends associated to this system. Most systems can do this. I remember seriously in around about 2001, two, three, around about 2004, I was a service technician in London. I remember clearly saying to my apprentice, Chris, you go do preventative maintenance for three days. Get out there, I don't wanna see you. And I sat for three days and I did this on every single graphic. I created the trend, I selected all the appropriate points for that system, I saved it, I linked it to the graphic. That was almost 20 years ago. Now a lot of BMS companies do do this. This is not rocket science or anything new, but a lot of jobs do not have this. I would put it out there just guessing in the whole world, if we went to every single BMS, I'd put it out there that more than 50% of the BMS systems out there do not have that trend button. In new construction, I appreciate it's hard to get this stuff done, but in service, if you're doing a BMS upgrade, there's no mechanical contractor, there's no builder that are messing things up and value engineering things that, and you know, doing bad things. If you're doing a BMS upgrade, you should be doing this. So during witnessing, I always say, show me the trends. This almost happens every time. They click on a thing, a trend thing, this menu drops down, and they go through the network controller, through the field controller, and they find the temperature sensor that has a bit of a weird name, you know, AHU1SAT1. It's hard to understand what that is if you're not a BMS person. And they click on that and they, they find the cooling valve, and they find the heating valve, and they click on they show me the trend. And the current plan is that every single time you want to look at a trend, you gotta go there and do it every single time. It takes the BMS engineer who built the database five minutes to do it every single time. You cannot expect the building owner or the facility manager to do that. It's, it's ridiculous. So although the BMS, you've created a, a way of actually reviewing trends, it's not practical to do that. You cannot do tuning, even for the service technician, if they're expected to every single time go and find those points. It is unacceptable not to have a button called trend on every single main graphic, chillers, boilers, cooling towers, every single AHU, car park exhaust systems, whatever it is. You have to have that. Again, that's nothing new. That's a very old technology that. So if you're a service technician, set yourself a goal over the next 12 months that every single time you come to do service, just do one of those. Just do the chawater system this week, just do the boilers next month, the queen towers next month, and do one AHU each month till the end of the year. Put that button on there. Your customer will appreciate that and they will feel that the money they pay for maintenance, they're getting a return on investment. They're getting something for their money. They're not just getting you walk around and look for broken things. So this would also go on, the, on that right hand side banner. I've got a button there called temperature parameters and pressure parameters. And I've just drawn one little thing there, but there should be one each probably. So in the pressure parameters page, you click the button, this page pops up. And inside there are all the parameters that you need to adjust as part of tuning the air handling unit supply air pressure reset strategy. And the same for the temperature, the supply air pressure reset strategy. So if you're doing trim and respond, you'll be counting all the flags. You know, how many flags do you need to reset up how many flags do you need to reset down? Are you resetting down half a degree Celsius every 10 minutes? Are you resetting the pressure up 10 pascals every 10 minutes? All those parameters that you need to adjust. You can make that, you can password protect that page so that nobody else can fiddle around with it, but people have to be able to look at the parameters page and understand, okay, I've got seven flags. At eight flags, I'm gonna start resetting the temperature down. Let me just be patient and wait. I can understand why my temperature is not coming down. Very important to have that. A lot of the time when I'm trying to do witnessing and I'm asking the BMS company, okay, how many flags do you need? They get their laptop out, they go into the configuration thing or in the database somewhere hidden away. And I'm like, hang on a sec, those points need to be on the graphic. I can't understand the system if you don't put those points there. Energy efficiency is very important nowadays. It's not like 20 years ago where we just left the BMS to do its own thing, controlling temperature for it to be comfortable. Nowadays through optimization, it's not just the BMS company, it's sometimes the mechanical contractor, consultants like me, or a sustainability consultants or mechanical consultants. They wanna look at these systems and try and diagnose how well is the system working. These two, the temperature parameters and pressure parameters, I'm gonna come back to them in a second. Now at the top there, I've got this button, which I've called kilowatt hour. Uh, I just made this up, I've never seen this before in a graphic. In Australia, and I think also in the UK, um, we have a lot of variable speed drives and all of them are networked. 
every single job in Australia, A grade, premium grade, probably also B grade. We have variable speed drives and we have BACnet MSTP connections to these variable speed drives. I'm sure everybody knows that you can map out the kilowatt hour point from the VSD. So you can map out the kilowatt hour for the supply fan and you can map out the kilowatt hour for the return fan. It's telling you how much power it's using per day, per week, per month, per year. So in that little top little dashboard widget thing, I've got there January, February, March through to December. And that is air handling units one, supply air fan, plus the return air fan kilowatt hour values. So that is the power consumption used for AHU1 in January and February and March. So I'm tracking the supply and return fans power consumption through the seasons because of course as we tune our pressure reset and our temperature reset that is all about energy efficiency and if we don't have that dashboard how do you look to see that what you're doing is actually working or it's very easy for your optimization efforts to be going the wrong way and you're actually using more power you're wasting energy very easy for that to happen. So if you don't have that little widget there, I'm gonna to propose to you slightly negatively that if you don't have that, you're not doing optimization and tuning. This will make more sense. I'm gonna to get to something else in a minute, just bear with me. What else I've got there is the red line is the power consumption for 2020. The blue line is the power consumption to 2021. And the green line is the power consumption for 2022. So you can see there that from red to blue to green, the power consumption is reducing which means that whatever I'm doing the last two years is working really well, half fives for me. So you can see in January, so January, the red line is January's consumption for this year, the blue line is January's consumption for last year, and the green line is January's consumption year before. It's very important to compare comparisons like that because it sort of considers the season. So obviously power consumption through winter and summer is different. So it's hotter outside or it's colder outside effects. So you gotta do it like that. Now for those buttons that we just looked at there, which was the floor plan, the parameter pages for temperature and pressure, the pre-configured saved group of trends, and the performance of this AHU from a power point of view, that data all already exists in the BMS, generally. So all of that is just a matter of drawing a graphic and linking it to a button. Like that is just time. You don't have to spend any money on buying anything assuming that you do have a work connection to a VSD, which we do have a lot of. So this, this part here is my discussion with you about what I consider just to be good practice. This one we should have already. And I have this on my jobs, except for the power one. I just made up the power one this morning. But the trends and the parameter pages and the floor plan, that's normal. I was witnessing last week in Sydney, doing that because I told them to do it. I asked them to do it, we work together. So let's move on to the next thing. Now let's get a bit more serious about this. So because we created a virtual meter, adding up the supply fan, the return fan, and then visualized it through, you know, this month, last month. Also that little thing there from January, to December, most of these little widgets that you have in the BMS, because that's a bit of a function of an energy management system, you can change the date range. So I could click on that little thing and I could change it from yearly to monthly to weekly to daily and in theory to hourly. So if I wanted to, I could change the date range to weekly and it would be Monday to Friday or Monday to Sunday. And I would see the power consumption for this week's Monday compared to last year's Monday and the year before's Monday. That's very interesting, exciting um, bit of data that. This is what the technology companies are doing, the cloud companies that are doing to make us look stupid. They're doing this stuff. It's not very hard to do it. So let's expand on that. So now I've got this little widget here, which is called the low rise air handling units. So what I've done is I've just simply taken that widget before that I've already created for all six of my AHUs, the north, south, east, west AHUs, blowing down 10 floors for the low rise and the two internal AHUs. I've just added them all together. So now I can understand the performance on sort of on the average of the whole low rise. And now I have another widget I created for the high rise. So I can look at one little widget and it'll tell me, I'm not sure if widget's the right word, dashboard, maybe it's a better word, or trend, I don't know. I can see how is each AHU individually performing power-wise? How are all the AHUs in the low rise performing together? How are all the AHUs in the high rise performing together? Now, let me freak you out a little bit. I should turn my camera on for this one, but I'm just stuck now. I've shuffled my whole room around, the camera's not actually on now. Okay, let's go back to our temperature parameters and pressure parameters. Now again, I have no notes for this. I'm just gonna wing it a bit. I might make a mistake and I'm not recording this audio file again. It's already 16 minutes. Oh my gosh, that's very long. All right, here we go. Do you know that 
With an air handling for a VAV system, the supply air temperature is indirectly related to the supply air pressure. Let me explain it a bit further. Say you're looking at your AHU graphic and the supply air temperature is controlling to a set point and the supply air pressure is controlling to a set point. For a test, if you double click and you override the AHU supply air temperature set point down from 16 degrees Celsius to 14 degrees Celsius, what happens? The cooling valve opens and the supply air temperature drops two degrees and it controls nicely. That slightly cooler air goes th all the way along the AHU through the ductwork. It goes all the way down the 10 floors in the ductwork riser. It goes through onto the 10 or 15 floors of the low rise and that colder air comes out of the supply air diffuser on all the floors. This AHU is the north AHU. There's two VAVs on every floor. There's 10 floors. There's 20 VAVs on the north. What happens is that colder air comes through it drifts across the room onto the zone temperature sensor and it, the zone temperature sensor measures a slightly lower temperature then the VAV damper modulates closed slightly because it doesn't it needs less cooling it closes slightly when all of the north AHUs all 20 VAVs all back off a little bit the duct pressure goes up and the supply fan slows down and the return fan tracking the supply fan also slows down. So slightly reducing the supply air temperature on an air handler unit results in the fan slowing down. It saves energy to do that. Do you know that? The negative is, and I think I've said this before, every single energy efficiency initiative almost ever, almost always has a negative impact in some other system. And in this case, we reduce the supply air temperature on the six low rise air handler units and we see their fans slow down. The negative impact obviously is that the chiller valves all open 20%, which meant that the system pressure in the pipe dropped 20, 30 kPa, and the chiller pumps speeded up to bring the pressure back up. So as we are lowering the AHU supply temperature, the fans are slowing down, tick in the box, we're saving on fan power, we're doing half halves, but we're also now using more power on the chiller pumping system. How do we rationalize that? I don't even know because no one's ever tried to do this. We've never tried to get this smart about it. So what I thought I'd do this morning, this why it took me a long time to work this out. So I had that low rise, that little dashboard for all the low rise AHUs, I had a little dashboard for all the high rise AHUs. Those are two virtual meters. Then I created a chill water system virtual meter, which was the electrical power consumption electrical for the chillers, the pumps, that's chill water and condenser water, and the fans, which is the cooling tower fans. So I've added up the electrical consumption for the entire chill water system, not just the chillers, but everything that's out there. So now I can see that as my low rise virtual meter dashboard and my high rise virtual meter dashboard, as that power consumption is reducing through tuning the supply temperature reset, I can see that maybe my chill water system is using more power. And then I've created a, a master dashboard, which is the chill water plus the AHUs. So, you know, January to December, it's the high rise AHU's kilowatt hours plus the low rise AHU kilowatt hours plus the chill water plant. That's that whole thing. That thing is chill water plus AHU fans. So now, let me pause for a second because this not, might not make sense. Let me tell you something else quickly that I forgot to tell you. If you're using Trim and Respond for your reset strategies for air handling at supply temperature and AHU supply pressure, where there's the flagging, this is super important. If you've made it this far, I'm amazed. Keep listening. We want to slightly bias the speed of response of the temperature loop. We want the temperature loop to act slightly quicker because we want the temperature to be a bit cooler so the fans slow down. So for example, I'm just making this up. What would happen is you would say, with the supply air temperature reset strategy, when you have enough flags, reduce the supply air pressure set point by half a degree Celsius every 10 minutes as the demand requires it. For on the parameters page for the pressure reset, we say increase the AHU pressure set point 10 pascals, not every 10 minutes, but every 20 minutes. So by tweaking our trim and respond parameters, we can gently bias the temperature control loop to react slightly faster in changes of the load or the demand than the pressure reset strategy. The pressure is a bit slower. It's slower to respond. And this is what tuning is. This is what tuning actually is. Not PID loop tuning. I think that a video on that before. That's not tuning. This is tuning. This is brain power. So as you are tweaking and tuning your supply air temperature reset strategy to be slightly quicker and your supply air pressure reset strategy to be slightly delayed, so we allow the demand to be picked up by temperature slightly quicker and then we allow the demand to be picked up by more pressure from the VAVs slightly delayed. As you're doing that, you're looking at your chill water 
an AHU master dashboard and all the other ones and you're looking at it and you're studying it and you say, oh, okay, look, let me change my date range from yearly to weekly or daily or hourly and you're watching this thing live. You're a service technician. This is what you're doing. You're not walking around looking for broken things. You're doing this the whole day. You're studying this thing and you're working out. Oh, hang on a sec. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What's happened is I've made the temperature reset too aggressive. It's too fast. I'm using too much pumping power. I'm putting too much demand on my AHUs. Let me slow that down a little bit. Let me change my temperature reset strategy to reset every 15 minutes rather than 10 minutes. I'm slowing it down. Rather than dropping a half a degree Celsius, I'm gonna drop 0.2 or 0.3 degrees Celsius. I'm slowing it down. Now, I just made this up this morning. I haven't done this actually in real life. It makes sense to me, but I'd put it out to you that, that no one's doing this. If you're a service technician, you're doing this, write down in the comments below in YouTube so we can celebrate the hero that you flippin' are. But I'm telling you right now, this is the stuff that counts. This is what wins you more work. This is what makes you, as the server technician in your professional career, <laughs> I'm actually getting all engaged and excited with any notes. Maybe I should just wing it every single week. Anyway, I think you got that right. I actually just realized now I forgot to draw something else. One last thing before I get off the screen sharing. In that pressure parameters page, where you've got the, all the parameters that help you to adjust the trim and response strategy. For the pressure page, you have to map in there the damper position of all the VAVs associated to the North Air Handler Unit. So on those 10 floors that the North AHU blows down and serves, there's two VAVs on the North perimeter, 10 floors times two is 20. You have to have all 20 VAVs dampers on there because as you're tweaking this pressure uh, reset strategy, you need to look at what are the dampers doing? Are they mostly open? Are they 50%? Are they closed? That's really important to understand that as you diagnose this. And for the temperature parameters page, on that same page, you need to have the temperature sensors of those 20 VAVs that are associated to the North AHU so that you can see what you're doing. That's a very simple thing. Forget about Vaughn stuff. That should be on every single job in the world. We should have that. You can't control the pressure of the AHU unless your eyeballs can see the dampers for just that AHU. And you can't go and click through all 10 pages, level one, level two, level three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and try and work out what are the north temperatures or the north VAV dampers. So listen guys, that was pretty intense. I hope that made sense. Watch it again maybe. <sighs> Sorry that took so long. That was so long. Like my day is pretty much ruined. Um, I was just genuinely like five minutes ago when I had a break, got some fresh air in here, I was just thinking about it and I realized something which I had not realized ever before. You know the previous video about like I showed you the three air handling units, they haven't changed in 20 years, why haven't we changed, we're not trying hard enough, blah blah blah. And I've just realized today why that is. Um, here's why we haven't improved in 20 years. Uh, my opinion is I think that Nowadays, we are building these control systems and our coding and our graphics, whether we like to admit this or not, we are still completely focused, I almost said flippant focused, we are still focused on comfort control because the graphics we are drawing right now are the same as they were 20 years ago because we are still actually just doing comfort control. We're not doing energy efficiency and optimization. Because if you think about it, in the previous video, with the Chorda system. If you are actually doing proper optimization on a Chorda system and proper tuning, you would have to create that dashboard with the COP of the, of the entire Chorda system and their, what are the pumps doing, supply temperature reset, condenser water temperature reset, the condenser water pumps. You would not be able to tune that system, the Chorda system, without that graphic. Can't do it, it's not possible. So if you don't have that graphic, it means you're not tuning the Chorda system. You're not doing Chorda optimization. Sorry about that. And this morning, what, what, and why this video got completely carried away today is because this morning I was sitting there thinking, well, I want to talk about this, this, and this, and the dashboards, but it only makes sense. The dashboards only make sense if you understand that the AHU supply temperature is sort of indirectly related to the pressure. You know, you have to understand that lowering the temperature reduces the fan power. And you have to understand that lowering the temperature makes the cooling valve open, makes the shorter pumps pump harder. You gotta understand that. So I was thinking this morning, how do I explain, how do I do this, a 10 minute video or a 50 minute video on this AHU graphic without explaining 
some of the basics around the optimization of an air handling unit does make sense. So the graphics we went through now with the low rise added up and the high rise added up and the Childa system and the whole dashboard for the whole performance of this, of this system, we don't have that graphic because we're not tuning the air handling units. If you were tuning the AHUs and the temperature and the pressure, you'd have to understand, you'd have to have that graphic. You would have had that graphic already. You don't have it because you're not doing it. We're not doing tuning. We are still doing comfort control. I don't care what you say. If you read a BMS company's annual preventative maintenance contract, $100,000 maintenance, if you read that, it talks a lot about energy efficiency and optimization and digitized maintenance and amazingness. We are not doing those things. The technician that goes to site is still doing comfort control. That's why, and I only realized five minutes ago, that's why our graphics have not improved in 20 years because we're still doing dumb stuff in maintenance. And before I go, one last thing, probably not the last thing because I'm making this up. We've just spoken about the air handling's temperature and pressure reset, how they affect each other, and how can we try and diagnose that saving against the Chorter system's um, extra power usage. Believe me, that is a bit complicated, but the relationship between the return fan and the supply fan and outside air is much more complicated than that. I know you're thinking, what? I can tell you right now, almost no one understands the complexity of the return fan and its relationship with outside air coming into a building. Every single job in the world is wrong. Okay, that's a bit brave. 99% of the jobs in the world, the return air fan tracking is wrong and we do not have the right outside air in. So if you wanna be crying about indoor air quality and CO2 and COVID, blah, blah, stop crying about it, fix the return fan. Stop worrying about all this other crap that everyone's going on about. We are not controlling the return fan properly anyway, and we do not have outside air coming in. Zero outside air coming in. The outside air damper, opening it, brings outside air in. But sometimes, if the return fan is wrong, you can open the outside damper to 100% and zero outside air will come in. That's why I should have notes. It stops me from rambling. Um, that's it. Have a good week. I will see you in a couple of weeks. I don't really want to do any more of this sort of stuff because it, it just kills my Sundays. Killed. But we'll see how we go. Thank you for watching. And thank you if you made it this far. Have a good one.